بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله ورب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشراف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد I'd like to begin this brief reminder <clears throat> with the statement of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala where he says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la ta'kulu amwalakum baynakum bil batil illa an takuna tijaratan tijaratan an taradin minkum wa la taktulu anfusakum in Allah kana bikum إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِكُمْ رَحِيمًا uh, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala He states O oh, you who believe do not devour your wealth amongst you all based upon falsehood except that it be from trade by way of mutual consent amongst you all and do not kill yourselves Undoubtedly, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is to you all merciful. He is to you all merciful. Before continuing with this discussion, one of the things that I'd like to point out, or there are two things that I'd like to point out. One, that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala here is addressing the believers. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is addressing the believers in this particular verse. And in his address to the believers, he prohibited us from the action of killing ourselves. Of killing ourselves. Which is the topic of discussion today. And in the prohibition, it is understood in an unrestrictive sense. That being your, the, yourselves, due to the uh, statement, لا تقتلوا أنفسكم. Anfus is uh, considered to be general, right? Due to it being mudaf, al idafa. المعرف بالعضافة مفردا كان أو مجموعا is what we find in نصول فك that when you find something that is considered مضاف regardless if it's a singular or a plural it's considered to be general what is intended by that is that not one item from the thing is what is understood but all items from the thing that is mentioned is what's intended is what's intended. Imam al-Shawkani, or rahmatullahi ta'ala alayh, he comments on the portion of the verse, la taqtulu anfusakum. A, la yaqtul ba'adukum, ayyuhal muslimun ba'adan illa bi sababin athbatahu ashar. Meaning, O you Muslims, some from amongst you should not kill others from amongst you except by way of some or reason by way of some reason that is firm that is firmly established within the Islamic legislation or aw la taqtulu anfusakum biqtiraf al maasi or what is intended is do not kill yourselves by committing sinfulness. Do not kill yourselves by committing sinfulness. Aw al murad an nahi an an yaktul al insan nafsahu haqiqatan wala man ya min hamal al ayah 
على جميع هذه المعاني. Then he gives a third interpretation. He states what is intended is a prohibition of an individual killing himself, literally killing himself. And then he states there is nothing to prevent, there is no pre pre preventative from understanding this verse upon all of those meanings. That what is intended by the verse are all of those that were just previously mentioned. This can be understood when going into the sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have an authentic narration that is upon the authority of Amr ibn al-As or Ridwan Allahi Ta'ala Alayh. Uh, this narration is collected by Abu Dawood in his Sunan and it is declared to be Sahih by Al-Imam Al-Albani or Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayh. The narrator, he states, اِحْتَلَمْتُ فِي لَيْلَةٍ بَارِدَةٍ فِي غَزْوَةِ ذَاتِ السَّلَاسِلِ He stated that I had a wet dream on a very cold night during the war expedi expedition dubbed ذَاتِ السَّلَاسِلِ فَأَشْفَقْتُ إِنْ اِغْتَسَلْتُ أَنْ أُحْلِكَ So he stated, I feared that, that if I were to take a bath that I would be destroyed. فَتَيَمَّمْتُ ثُمَّ صَلَّيْتُ بِأَصْحَابِي الصُّبْحِ He stated, so I made tayammum and then I prayed Salatul Fajr with my companions or my comrades. فَذَكَرُوا ذَلِكَ لِلنَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ so they mentioned this to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stated, Ya Amr, asallayta bi ashabika wa anta junubun? Did you pray with your uh, companions or your comrades while you were in a state of janaba, a state of impurity? فَأَخْبَرَتُهُ بِالَّذِي مَنَعَنِي مِنَ الْإِخْتِسَالِ So the narrator he states that I informed the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of that which prevented me from taking a bath. ثُمَّ قُلْتُ سَمِعْتُ اللَّهِ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى يَقُولُ لَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ and then I said to him, this is Amr ibn al-As saying to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that I heard Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala say, do not kill yourselves. فَالضَّحِكَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَلَمْ يَقُولْ شَيْئًا So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon hearing Amr ibn al-As make this statement, he started to laugh. And he did not say anything to Amr, yani as it relates to disapproval of what he had just mentioned. This particular statement this particular statement when looking at how the Prophet وسلم, reacted is a proof that shows that the way that Amr understood the verse was correct. He was correct in his ihtijaj. One of the ways or things that, are, that is looked at is the fact that the Prophet وسلم, his reaction that he laughed at what, the, what, what Amr ibn al-As yani, has stated. The second thing that is looked at is that he did not show any disapproval for the understanding of Amr ibn al-As. <clears throat> Thus, w without a doubt, an individual killing himself or bringing harm to himself by his own hands, it enters into the verse that was 
quote it previously. And that verse is Surah An Nisa, uh, verse 29, for those that are writing. It enters into that particular prohibition one physically killing himself or bringing harm to himself. As Sheikh Muhammad Bazmul in his book, Ida un Nafs wal Intihar, Yani bringing harm to oneself and committing suicide, he states, قتل النفس في الحديث شامل لنفس المرء ذاته ولنفس غيره فلا يجوز للمسلم أن يقتل النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق والنفس التي حرم الله عليه قتلها أول ما يدخل فيها نفسه هو He states that the killing of or the taking of a life in this hadith is, inclu- is inclusive and includes the life of an individual in and of itself or, or a life other than himself. Thus it is not permissible for a Muslim to take a life in which Allah wa ta'ala, has prohibited except with due right. And the life, that which Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala has made prohibited to kill, then the very first to enter into that would be that person's own life. That the foremost to enter into this pro- prohibition is an individual, his life itself. Meaning he's prohibited from taking his life. Now, Sheikh Bazmul used several narrations to substantiate this point, giving us an understanding of how vast the statements of the Prophet ﷺ are as it relates to this prohibition. From the evidences that, or the proofs that he used is the Hadith of Anas ibn Malik, which is mutafiqun alayh. With the Prophet ﷺ, he stated, أكبر الكبائر الإشراق بالله وقتل النفس وأقوق الوالدين وشهادة الزور أو قال وقول الزور. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم stated from the most gravest of the major sins is associating a partner in worship with Allah, taking a, a life disobedience to the parents, and bearing false testimony or false speech. Taking a life, what is intended by that, are all those meanings that were previously mentioned by Imam Imam Ashokani, and that will also include an individual taking his own life. Likewise, from the evidences that Sheikh Bazmul used was the hadith of Abi Huraira or Ridwan Allahi Ta'ala Alay. With the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he stated, Ijtanibu as Saba al Mubiqat. That, yani, avoid the seven grave or deadly sins. As Shark Billah was Sihr. وَقَتْلُ النَّفْسِ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَأَكْلُ الرِّبَا وَأَكْلُ الْمَالِ الْيَتِينِ وَالتَّوَلِّ يَوْمَ الظَّافِ وَقَضْفُ الْمُحْسِنَاتِ الْمُؤْمِنَاتِ الْغَافِلَاتِ They are to associate a partner in worship with Allah. Magic. Taking a life, that which Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has prohibited without due right. Uh, yani indulging, indulging in usury or riba. Yani t- taking the wealth of the orphan. Fleeing on the battlefield. Or accusing a chaste believing woman of an immoral act that she w- wouldn't come near to committing. The point that... Uh, The first, as shirk. The second, as sihr or magic. The third, taking a life 
that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has prohibited what I'll do right. You can just shorten that by writing, taking a life. The fourth, indulging in riba or usury. The fifth, um, uh, taking the wealth of the orphan or mis eating the wealth of the orphan. The sixth, fleeing on the battlefield. And the seventh, accusing upright Muslim women of immoral acts, yani of azina. That's what's intended by that. The point is that in these two narrations and others that point to the same thing, that take, a, a individual taking his own life is also included in that prohibition. As sometimes it is commonly believed that what is intended is taking the life of another. But taking your own life is also included in that. This is because, without a doubt, it is well known to all of us that the legislation of Allah wa Ta'ala, the, preserve, the preservation of the life of one's life is one of the things that the Islamic legislation has come to protect, to maintain. And Imam al shatibi in his book al muwafiqat he stated, اتفقت الأمة بل سائر الملل على أن الشريعة وضعت للمحافظة على الضروريات الخمس. That this nation, this Islamic nation, has agreement, and then he states, on the contrary, the rest of the religions, they all have agreement that the Sharia, it has been legislated in order to preserve or maintain five things. And then he states, وَهِيَ الدين, The first being the deen. The second, and nafs the life. The third, and nasl or progeny. The fourth, al-mal, or wealth. And the fifth, al-aql, or intellect. Do I need to repeat that? Hmm? Now, the first being at deen, the religion. The second being at nafs, life. The third being at nasl, or progeny. The fourth being al mal, or wealth. And the fifth being al aql, or intellect. Intellect. With that said, Ya Ibadullah, <clears throat> our legislation prohibits us from bringing harm to ourselves or bringing harm to other than ourselves. And this is what is intended from the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he states, La Dharar wa la dirar. Do not لا ضرر ولا ضرار Normally translated as do not harm or breathe or, or, recipro or reciprocate harm. Do not harm nor reciprocate harm. Reciprocate harm meaning someone comes and harms you, you pay them back by bringing harm to them. But the scholars of Al-Islam, they differed on the meaning of the difference in the meaning of darar and dirar. And there were several statements that were held by the a'imma. There was a, a position from some of the a'imma that stated that there was no difference between the two in meaning. So it was as if the Prophet ﷺ said, do not harm nor harm. Said the same thing twice but two different, with two different wordings. The same thing with two different words, and we find this even in the English language. Sometimes you may find a person say something and use a different word to emphasize what it is that they're saying. Do not kill nor take a life, for instance. 
So the ulama, they state that both of these have the same meaning, the, uh, the second emphasizing the first. Then some of the ulama, they stated, لا ضرر What is intended by that is do not bring harm intentionally or without intention. That, that, that first one is harming with, in, with intent to harm or without intent to harm. But the second is always with intent to harm. That's understood? A third position was at darar is from the perspective of one individual. Meaning, لا يدر نفسك أو غيرك من الناس. Meaning, don't harm yourself or other than yourself from the people. It's coming from the perspective of one individual. Like you, don't harm others around you, nor harm yourself. They said, some of the scholars held their opinion, that is what was intended by لا ضرر. But then when it came to لا ضرر, that it included an individual that would go out to harm someone else and the one that would be receiving the harm, as is normally translated today. Let, do not harm nor reciprocate harm. And so there were varying different meanings that were held with the a'imma. The important thing to understand as it relates to this is that all of those scenarios are considered to be prohibited in our religion. All of those scenarios are considered to be prohibited in the religion. This particular sitting or setting, I would like to focus on the harm that, a, that an individual brings to himself. I believe last year when I was here, I dealt with the believers killing one another. I could be mistaken, but I believe I had something, I spoke of something similar to that effect. But this time around, I want to deal with a believer bringing harm to himself and consequently killing himself. This is from varying perspectives. And it differs as it relates to the condition of the individual being discussed. Sometimes an individual could bring harm to himself and that harm is physical. We, all of us would be able to see the harm that an individual is doing to himself. Or it is what we call ma'anawi. It is not physical. But the harm that, that, he, that he or she brings to themselves is clear. Like the mulhid brings harm to himself by denying the existence of Allah, yani the atheist. He harms himself by denying that there is a creator of the heavens and the earth. The mushrik brings harm to himself by associating a partner in worship with Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. The Christian brings harm to himself by attributing qualities of lordship to Isa ibn Maryam. By claiming that Isa ibn Maryam is the Lord. And thus forth and so on. This isn't a physical harm. But yet and still, it's still a harm that he brings to himself. Some harms can be apparent and some harms can be hidden. Some harms can be apparent and some harms can be hidden. When dealing with this particular subject matter, then it is incumbent for us to understand that likewise a believer can bring harm to himself. A believer can bring harm to himself by way of his sinfulness and disobedience to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. This reality is seen 
throughout the text of the Quran and the Sunnah. A believer brings harm to himself by falling into sins on a regular basis, being heedless in returning back to Allah, seeking forgiveness from Him, and making tawbah, and thus forth, and so on. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, he says, ثُمَّ أَوْرَثْنَا الْكِتَابَ الَّذِينَ اسْطَفَيْنَا مِنْ إِبَادِنَا فَمِنْهُمْ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ وَمِنْهُمْ مُقْتَسِدٌ وَمِنْهُمْ سَابِقٌ بِالْخَيْرَاتِ الْآيَةِ He states, then we cause those that we chose from amongst our servants to inherit the book. From them are those that oppress themselves. Those that oppress themselves. Now Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is referring to those that follow the guidance. From them are those that traverse a middle course. And from them are those that are foremost in putting forth good. From them are those that are foremost in putting forth good. As Shaykh Abdul Rahman Nasr al Sa'adi, or Rahmatullahi Ta'ala alayhi, he states concerning the first portion of this verse, Thumma awrathna al kitab. He states, Wa hum hadhihi al ummah. They are this nation, the nation of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They are the ones that inherited this book from amongst his servants. فَمِنْهُمْ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِي From them are those that, are, that oppress themselves. بِالْمَعَاسِي أَلَّتِي هِيَ دُونَ الْقُفْرِ By way of sinfulness that does not reach the level of being called or considered disbelief. وَمِنْهُمْ مُقْتَسِدْ أَيْ مُقْتَصِرْ عَلَى مَا يَجِبُ عَلَيْهِ تَارِقٌ لِلْمُحَرَّمِ he states, yani, and those that are muktasid, meaning that traverse upon the middle way, they are those that restrict themselves to that which is binding upon them to put forth, and they abandon that which is considered to be prohibited. وَمِنْهُمْ سَابِقٌ بِالْخَيْرَاتِ أَيْ سَاعِرٌ فِيهَا وَاجْتَهَدَ فَسَبَقَ غَيْرَهُ They are those that are hastening towards khayrat, towards good. They hasten towards it, and they put forth efforts in achieving it, and they are foremost in doing that good outside of others besides them. Outside of others besides them. <clears throat> These are the, vari the varying uh, conditions of the Muslims. The one that oppresses himself and brings harm to himself, the one is, that is on the middle course, and then the one that is foremost in putting forth good. The thing that I would like to focus on, however, is the harm that an individual does by way of food and drink that consequently causes a or has an adverse effect on one's quality of life consequently leading an individual to his death consequently leading an individual to his death as some of us bring harm to ourselves in that manner. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He states, Ya ayyuhalladheena aminu, kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnaakum, al aya O you who believe, eat from the pure things that we have provided for you. Eat from the pure things that we have provided for you. Without a doubt, from the foremost of that which enters into this verse is that which is considered to be halal from food and drink. 
For this reason, we find in, this, in the hadith of Abi Huraira, or Ridwan Allah Ta'ala alayhi, the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we say, Inna Allah, or Ya Ayyuhan Nas, Inna Allah Tayyibun, Wala Yaqbalu Illa Tayyiban. The O, O people, indeed Allah Tabaraka Wa Ta'ala is pure or good, and He only accept, accepts that which is pure or good. Wa Innahu Amar Al Mu'minin Bima Amar Bihi. Al Mursaleen. And indeed he ordered the believers with that which he ordered the messengers with. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he quoted the statement of Allah, Ya ayyuha rusul Ya ayyuha rusul kulu min tayyibat wa'amil kulu min tayyibat wa'amil salihan inni bima إِنِّي بِمَا تَعْمَلُ إِنِّي إِنِّي عَلِيمٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُ هَكَذَا الْآيَةَ مَاذَا إِنِّي بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ مَاذَا خَبِير إِنِّي بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِير The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he stated or he quoted the statement of Allah, O messengers, eat from the pure and good things, do righteous good deeds, for indeed Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is well aware of that which you do. Then after that he quoted the statement of Allah, Surah Al-Baqarah, Ya ayyuhalladheena aminu, kulu min tayyibat ma razaqnaakum. O you who believe, eat from the pure and good things, uh, that we have provided for you. ثُمَّ ذَكَرَ رَجْلٌ عَلَى السَّفَرِ Then he mentioned a man that was on a, uh, on a journey. ثُمَّ ذَكَرَ رَجْلٌ أشعب, uh, السفر. Then he mentioned an individual that was on a prolonged journey. أَشْأَثَ أَغْبَرَ His hair was uh, like dusty and unkept. يَمُدُّ يَدَيْهِ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ And he raises his hands to the heavens. Yani in order to supplicate to Allah. يَا رَبِّي يَا رَبِّي Saying, Oh my Lord, Oh my Lord. لَكِنْ يعني لكن مَطْعَمَهُ حَرَامٌ وَمَشْرَبَهُ حَرَامٌ وَمَلْبَسَهُ حَرَامٌ غُذِيَ بِالْحَرَامٌ فَأَنَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لِذَلِكَ However, his food was prohibited. His drink was prohibited. His clothes, his clothes were prohibited. And he nourished himself with that which was prohibited. So how is it that his supplication can be answered? And this particular narration has contained therein an abundance of benefit. And in reality, it would take more than one setting just dealing with the benefits that are found in this narration. But the point of me quoting it was to emphasize the statement that I made earlier that the first and foremost that enters into what is considered to be toyibat is that which is, which is known to be halal. That which is known to be halal. Ibn Kathir, before I make this statement, or before I call Ibn Kathir, everything that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala prohibits, there is a mafsada therein, either from the absolute sense or from the preponderant sense, meaning the overwhelming sense. And so when we take a look at food and drink, one of the things that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has prohibited is pork which is well known to all of us. And when we look into the wisdoms of why Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala prohibited this, the, the, the consumption of this animal, then we find that this animal causes adverse effects on the body from the varying types of parasites that are contained in that meat that 
react in the body uh, in, a, in a negative manner. Every time somebody puts a morsel of pig flesh into their mouth and into their body, each time that they do that, they're consequently bringing harm to themselves that will have an adverse effect of their quality of life that can lead to, de to their death. <clears throat> Thus they are, by way of their own hands, killing themselves. Killing themselves. Ibn al-Kathir, or rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, he states as it relates to at tayyibat a mustatabin fi nafsihi غَيْرُ الدَّارٍ لِلْأَبْدَانِ وَلَا لِلْأَقْلِ وَلَا لِلْأُقُولِ He says, that which is good or beneficial for oneself, for his self, and it is not that which will harm the body or the, nor the intellect, neither the body nor the intellect. This is what is considered to be from the طَيِّبَاتِ from food and drink. That it is a source of benefit for the individual and it brings no harm to the body whatsoever, to the body nor to the intellect. Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala, before I say that, this shows us that the Islamic legislation encourages the believer to be health conscious. This is one of the indications that points to the fact that the Islamic legislation encourages us to be health conscious. We as Muslims should, should be conscious of what it is that we consume. Especially in this day and time with this country, a lot of the food companies are so consumed with making money that they place into items, food items that are in the stores, ingredients that are not considered to be food whatsoever. That if you were to have it, one of those items in the bottle, you would never put your lips to the bottle. You would never put your lips to the bottle. Now, if it was said to an individual, if an individual was given a bowl of honey and a drop of cobra venom was placed into that honey and then mixed in very well and like this, and then presented to an individual and, and, and the individual was told, look, this is honey. It's 99% honey with 1% cobra venom. The FDA, and the FDA says that won't harm you as long as you only eat that amount. None of us would consume that. None of us would consume that. But let's say, for instance, one of us were to consume that and, there, and he brings no harm to his body. Would he yani, constantly eat that bowl once every day? Although that small amount in that bowl may not have brought harm to him, in that instance, the continuation of consumption of that over time does. The consumption of that over time does. And when we go into the supermarkets and we purchase items, there are some items that are literally poison. Trisodium phosphate, for instance, which is found in some cereal by General Mills marketed to children. For those that are into construction, they know that this is paint thinner. But the FDA and the FTC just stamp food grade on it and say, as long as you only eat this amount, you're okay.
Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, He says, Ya Bani Adam, khudu zinyatakum inda kulli masjidin, wa kulu wa shrabu wa la tusrifu, innahu la yuhibbu al-musrifin. I'm going back to the point that I, make, that I was making that the Islamic legislation encourages with being health conscious. This particular verse in Surah Al-A'raf, verse 31, is an indication of that as well. In this verse, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He says, O descendant of, O son of Adam, take your beautification, beautify yourself when you come to the masjid. I need to, to pray. And eat and drink and do not be excessive, for indeed Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala does not love the excessive. Yani eat and drink and don't be excessive. Yani don't overeat. Don't overeat. Ibn Kathir, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, he stated, Qala ba'd al salaf, jama Allahu ad tib kullahu fi nifs aya. That Allah gathered all of medicine in half of a verse. When he said, Kulu washrabu wa la tusrifu. Eat and drink and what? And do not be excessive. Do not be excessive. Because even going to excess or falling into excess as it relates to something that is considered pure or good could have a harmful effect on an individual. Is anyone familiar with the way that it is, uh, 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 what is attributed to Imam Muslim's death? Hey, Imam Muslim was asked a, a question that he was unable to answer. And so he went to research the matter more at the beginning of the night. And he was given a basket of dates. And as he was busied with his research, he kept going into the dates. Until it was said that he had ate the whole basket. He died and it's believed that he died as a relate of overconsumption of those dates from going into excess. Now the question is, are dates haram? La. But this is a ibra, this is a lesson for us as it relates to going or falling into excess even with things that are considered to be pure and good. For this reason, Imam al-Shawkani, he stated, وَمِنَ الْإِسْرَافِ الْأَكْلْ لَا لِهَاجَ وَفِي وَقْتِ يعني, he states, مِنَ الْإِسْرَافِ الْأَكْلْ لَا لِهَاجَ That falling into excessiveness is eating when without a need. Meaning, you're not hungry, but you just continue consuming. This is falling into excessiveness as it relates to food and drink. Meaning you're eating at a time where you're satisfied. When you're satisfied. Remember the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, 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 he taught us, فَثُلُثٌ لِطَعَامِهِ وَثُلُثٌ لِشَرَابِهِ وَثُلُثٌ لِنَفْسِهِ That a third is for his food, a third is for his drink, and a third is for himself or the heir or however. This is how the believer should be as it relates to consumption of food and drink, not falling into excess or excess. So the harms of overeating, especially in this society, are well known to us, especially considering the fact that we have a lot of people that are suffering from obesity. And as a result of the obesity, they're suffering from other uh, medical issues or conditions. All of this can directly be attributed to overeating and 
bad, uh, having a bad diet. Having a bad diet. All of this is considered to be a harm that an individual is bringing to himself. A harm that an individual is bringing to himself. So the point that I, again, that I'd like to emphasize is the fact that the Islamic legislation encourages the believer to be health conscious. Now there are several other narrations that I'd like to quote that also indicate that. From them we have the statement of uh, the Hadith of Abi Hurairah where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he stated, فِي الْحَبَّةِ السَّوْدَى شِفَاءٌ لِكُلِّ دَاءٍ إِلَّا أَسَّامٍ That there in Black Sea there is a cure for every ailment except death. This is directly related to health matters or health issues. And even the Kufar today are becoming astounded at the various benefits that are found in Black Seed. I remember reading something, some report on how Black Seed oil, when produced into oil form, that they discover cures 101 ailments. The point that I'm making is that this statement of the Prophet Sallallahu is health related. Likewise, we have the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the Hadith of Mulaika bint Amr. With the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he stated, Al-Banul Bakr Shifa'un, Wa Samnuha Dawa'un, Wa Lahmuha Da'un. That the milk of the cow is a cure. And the fat, and its fat is a medicine. And its meat is a disease. Its meat is a disease. And th this doesn't mean that the cow is prohibited, but without a doubt, we don't want to fall into excess as it relates to, to the consumption of this animal. Another narration that is also health related is a statement of the Prophet ﷺ from the Hadith of Abu Huraira or Ridwan Allah Ta'ala Alay, where the Prophet ﷺ he stated, Ma anzal Allahu da'an illa anzala lahu shifa'an. That Allah to Baraka wa Ta'ala, He has not sent down a disease or an ailment except that He sent down its cure. Except that He sent down its cure. Can somebody check the schedule and see when my time ends? It ends at 5 o'clock? Okay, I'm over my time for a minute. In closing, there are certain ingredients that are found in foods that we want to become aware of when we see them in an item and totally avoid them. And totally avoid them. Propylene glycol, for instance, which is found in a lot of sweets, because they say it enhances the sweet taste. It's also an ingredient in antifreeze due to its de-icing agent. The FDA and the FTC said this is okay if consumed in low amounts. There are other ingredients I would encourage the brothers to go to my website, pureislam.com. Islam is spelled with two A's. If you, if you put one A, you'll be sent to a Sufi site. So, so make sure it's two A's. And I believe it's the nutrition page. I have a article on there, uh, ingredients to be aware of. And I'm, I list some ingredients. I encourage the brothers to go back to that. I don't want to take up more of my time. I see our brother Siddiq is here, and he's just praying his tahiyyat to the masjid. Uh, so with that, uh, I want to close out. And uh, again, the point of the discussion, Islam's encouragement to be health conscious, and with that, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.